Welcome to the Hopcast. Thanks for joining us once again, everybody. I'm Brad Chalewski. My name is Ken Hunnameter. And special guest, special location, <laughs> special beers. Special week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's special, and uh, we're here at Meridian Pint. We've got Tim um, that's agreed to sit down with us. Uh, very nice <laughs> of you. Um, Meridian Pint has uh, become one of those craft destinations here in, in the D.C. area, and obviously we're out, out here for the CBC. Tell us a little bit about some of the stuff that you normally do here. Uh, we focus on kind of our, our tagline we've had since we opened in mid-2010 was celebrating the art of American craft beer. So what we do here is pour exclusively American craft beer. Uh, we'll get some international stuff on once in a blue moon. We did an April Fool's Day event where we did, surprise, there's all international beer on instead <laughs> of American beer. But uh, yeah, we focus on American craft beer and more specifically on local uh, local mm -hmm. craft beer. So that's definitely been something that we've grown into as the scene is growing uh, DC Brow was the first brewery in the district in over 55 years. That opened uh, just about two years ago, in about uh, 10 days, in the uh, two years ago. So we opened a little bit before them, and we've had numerous breweries open since then in the district and around the district. So we've definitely been growing uh, as the scene's been growing. But we try our bread and butter is local beer and being a neighborhood bar. We uh, first and foremost try to be a neighborhood bar, and then uh, a very very close second is focusing on beer, but. Uh, that's what we try and do in and out on a daily basis, make great, fresh, affordable, local craft beer available to the neighborhood and the people in D.C. Yeah, like so we're about, what, two miles out of like downtown, right? Yeah, we're about two miles north of downtown. Yeah, so, so we're a little bit removed from like downtown district okay. area. Uh, Columbia Heights is something where we are is a little okay. bit more north of uh, kind of the downtown bustle. It's a little more... Uh, people live live out here and hang out yeah here yeah yeah, yeah definitely the, you know most of our business is regular as locals people we see all the time on the weekends we definitely get more full and you see some less familiar faces but for the most part it's most of the same people all the time people you see at the coffee shop across the street people you see so it's kind of like the hipstery around. neighborhood or what, what do you call <laughs> kind it of, kind of yeah i guess if you ask people in dc that they would say here Street. <laughs> yeah okay so they're drinking fancy coffees and fancy beer yeah <laughs> So what were you? Uh, what was the bar all about before? I mean, you've got DC Brow coming up on two years, and it's um, it's taken DC a little while to take off as far as having a, n a number of uh, small breweries in town. But it's, it's certainly on its way. Mm -hmm. But what were you doing before that? So before that, we were still uh, trying to pour local beer as much as we could, uh, whether it be Flying Dog. I mean, we've definitely taken our uh, definition of local from like here, yeah. and it's like <laughs> about here now. Right, and in like right. two years, it'll be like right here. Um, <laughs> So we've tried to pour, you know, what we've called local beer for a long time, but when we first opened, we definitely had more, uh, a lot more California beer, uh, you know, a lot more um, just West Coast beer we'd be pouring a lot of. And then, like, in the last year and a half year, we've uh, just discovered, like, we don't really need to be pouring beer that comes from 2,000 miles away mm -hmm. when there's fresher stuff that's just as good. <laughs> and, you know, this kind of thing where, like, so he's like, so what are the hops in this? Like, I don't know, brewers right there. I mean, I know I can tell you, but <laughs> you should want to ask them. They're sitting right there at the bar. So that's, great. that's always cool. We like doing that. And, and the guys we have around here, the men and women we have working in the scene around here are awesome. Uh, so we love to support them. And that's definitely something we enjoy doing. So we're, we're getting more and more into that. Um, we do try and pour the best American beer that we can. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just more and more come to realize that we think our scene has some of the best beer in the country. Um, you know, I guess each region has its own taste, but there are a ton of lager breweries and a lot of German styles that you don't see made in, other, in a lot of other yeah. regions that are made really well here. Mm. Um, so we're always stoked about that. Very we love cool. a good Pilsner. Uh, which is what we're drinking right now, and, and you had a little hand in this one. Yep, so this is the, uh, the Meridian Pills. We made this with Jason Oliver at Devil's Backbone. Uh, for our Drink Local event on Friday, we're, uh, 20 breweries are gonna be in the house. We're doing 28 local drafts. Uh, nine of those will be beers. Our staff went around and brewed. Uh, I kind of headed up the project. Um, so the one we did down at Devil's Backbone was uh, Pills. Uh, I really love Pills. I wanted to do a decocted Pilsner. Um, mm -hmm. And they have a really unique system. Their brew pub system down Devil's Backbone is a Japanese system that has a decoction kettle built wow. into it. Uh, so they do a lot of de decocted beers there. And uh, so we wanted to do that. And Jason really wanted to do a 
sort of subtly American influenced German pills. So it's a lighter bodied, crisp bitterness German pills, um, but we snuck some American hops in, even though mm -hmm. it's not super apparent. So there's uh, Tetanang in there, so you get some noble hops. Um, there's also Mount Hood and then Chinook. So Chinook's bringing a little that American character in Mount Hood, I think it was kind of bridges the gap, still has that herbal uh, kind of noble quality, but it's an American hop that has a little bit of the citrus character. But if you don't tell people, they wouldn't really know there's a lot of West Coast hop in this, <laughs> uh, which is nice. I think that was the goal of to make it subtle, make it taste German, but have a little bit of an American influence too. Yeah, it is it's certainly balanced, which is um, what I look for in mm -hmm. good good Pilsner style beer. So uh, yeah, this is really nice. So the brewing around at different breweries, is that something you've been doing for a while or just now for these? Um, this that's something that we've started or? doing. We started doing not far after we opened. Uh, Sam Fitz, who runs the beer program with me, uh, started brewing up at Oliver Brews in Baltimore. They're a brew pub. They do, uh, they have an open fermenter, Peter Austin, English system, wow. uh, do a lot of real ale. So we started in early 2011 um, brewing there. We've, we're now on our seventh collaboration with Steve Jones up at Oliver. Um, so we started doing that before. Then before we got this idea for the project, we brewed the Schwartz beer at Mad Fox. Um, and then just it's something that I've been around. We brewed with DC Brow before that, and then we just had the idea, like, let's just start pumping this out. You know, like, breweries are stoked to do this with us. Let's, cool. Let's do it, yeah. It's a fun way to have, I guess, have your own beer without having a brewery, without <laughs> yeah. trouble. Yeah, there. yeah, it's kind of like the gypsy brewery type thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the brewery, I mean, it's definitely all the brewery. We go out, and I help formulate the recipe, and we go out and there for the brew day, like, we're digging out the mash tun. We're putting in work and not just phoning in a recipe and saying, hey, let's put our name on it. No, just we're actually tweeting about it the whole yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, definitely put our name. And uh, at Mad Fox, Bill Madden says, you're not allowed to put your name on the brew sheet unless you shovel out the mash tun. <laughs> so uh, we definitely got a good share of working at most of the breweries. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cool way to do that. And I more so saw it as a way to focus. Sometimes brewers aren't awesome at patting themselves on the back. And I think a lot of times, like the guys around here, I think deserve that. And... In a way, I wanted to showcase something really cool that all of the local brewers do well. Um, I think a lot of times there's a, um, people are like, oh, there's all these people in town, we want to pour like our double IPA, like DC Brow, like, wants to, like Wings of Armageddon is an amazing double IPA. And a lot of people like to put that style out because it's a crowd pleaser for sure and gets mm -hmm. hype. But sometimes for me, it's like, you know, your humble Pilsner is actually awesome. Uh, I think you guys should be showcasing. You're like, I, You might not think the rest of the country wants to see it, but I think they do. Uh, so it's a cool way to, I think, highlight strengths at different breweries around here. Yeah. Uh, and they don't need me, obviously, to help them do that. But I thought it'd be cool to just kind of see what we could come up with. Um, just kind of different strengths at different breweries. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think sometimes those styles, uh, you know, brewers will make them because they that's what they want to drink. You know, you mm -hmm. can't just sit there and drink a double IPA all day. <laughs> but they don't realize that, you know, consumers actually want that stuff too. Uh, and everyone's kind of wowed by the bigger styles and, and that sort of thing. But... You know, nothing like a nice classic session beer. So yeah, I think uh, of the nine beers, seven of them are about four and a half percent or under. Mm -hmm. One's That's like awesome. two point five percent. The biggest beer that we did was with three stars. We did an imperial stout, and uh, they're known for doing pretty high octane beers. So I feel like it was an accomplishment to uh, have negotiated them down to an eight and a half percent imperial stout. <laughs> uh, I think uh, most people would have expected a fourteen percent imperial stout from three stars, but uh, yeah, we did an awesome. Uh, Mike McGarvey did an awesome job uh, with that recipe. It's uh, kind of a little bit more English in, in character. Uh, and one of our guys, Mike Alloy, who's a server here, also works at Three Stars, and he helped out with that recipe, and that turned out killer. I was really stoked about that. Uh, but most of them pretty low octane mm -hmm. sessionable beers because I like to do this a lot. So, yeah. you know, it's uh, <laughs> nice to be able to do that over the course of, of, you know, five or so beers other than two at 12%, and then I'm done. Yeah, I'm especially quite when the you're working. When you're working, when you're working and yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty little guy, so beers get to me pretty quickly. <laughs> We also have, we're sitting right in front of your cellar, which is pretty impressive. Um, it's not just a place that you kind of, you know, fashioned a closet and put stuff in there. No, we're not closeting beer here. Yeah. We're actually cellaring. Yeah, cellaring yeah. tell beer. us about this. So this is a, uh, a cool toy that we put in almost two years ago. It was something where we first installed it and I was so happy about it. I was like, this is huge, this is the coolest toy ever. <laughs> and then you and like three, three weeks later, I was like, this thing sucks. Like it needs to be twice as big, but it's so tiny. Uh, yeah, so this is temperature, humidity controlled. Uh, I keep it at uh, like 53 degrees, I like to keep it at. 
because um, we do serve uh, about 15 to 18 bottles out of here at cellar temperature. I like to get that a little bit on the colder side because if it's one bottle that's sitting on a table for a while, um, you don't want it to be super room temperature. So I keep it, like to keep it a couple of degrees cooler. A lot of people do it right at 55. Um, so a lot of the, the bottles, most of the second shelf up is all long-term aging. Uh, we definitely put a lot of thought into uh, when's the best time to pour this, not when's the oldest, you know, mm -hmm. we can have this. There's definitely there's some beers that hit a sweet spot um, much earlier. Um, so you're constantly pulling things out and possibly testing them or uh, looking at what other people are saying about you're Looking it. at what other people are saying, just trying to keep a really good, we have a very detailed spreadsheet inventorying everything by style, by ABV, by brewer suggested, Best Buy, mm -hmm. whether the brewer actually means that or they're forced to say that on the label, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but bre beers like Brewery <laughs> Saison de Lent, uh, I kind of see that beer more like an Orval where it's, you know, kind of brisk and hoppy with not much Brett character and it's fresh. And then after a year, it gets a little bit, it gets a good amount of Brett, but the hops kind of fade out. It's trying to find that intersection of where they're, the hop character and the bread are, you know, in perfect, uh, perfect union. So that's a beer that, you know, there are different opinions on when to pour it. So that's the kind of stuff that we like to, to keep an eye on. But uh, we definitely have some some friend breweries or brews that are kind of our, our pet favorites. So a lot of Jolly Pumpkin stuff, a lot of brewery stuff. Allagash, really good friends of theirs. Um, yeah, but all all American stuff, which I'm very excited about. I like that we have a, a real all American collection of some killer beers that are uh, good now, but going to be even better down the road. And you're doing uh, draft in there too. You got some yeah. Barrels, so so we have about cool. seventy to seventy five sixtles. Uh, in there, kind of from from all over the country, it's really a all right, challenge. So that goes further back then. Yeah, so, there's no way. Yeah, so there's, about, there's another. It's like a hidden yeah. panel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You pull the right book and it opens up. And it's a wide variety because if you see, there's no distribution laws, right? Like anything can come in. If so DC is kind of the wild west, uh, yeah. is what people say mm -hmm. about liquor laws. So as long as you're registering and paying taxes on beer, we can bring in uh, anything. So Okay. Stuff like Cigar City doesn't come to D.C., but we've uh, brought some in. I mean, we have such amazing regulars that we have folks who you like. I came back from uh, from Russian River, and here's like four cases of X, Y, and Z. Oh, oh cool. Um, like, I'll drink it myself, but if you want to buy like a case or two and sell it here, like I'd love for you guys to, to have it, or at least we get that offer in advance from people. Um, you're like, you know, if you want to if you want to let us know, and which is super cool. Or we've gone out to uh, Michigan. Uh, we made a couple trips, but we went out to Michigan uh, last year, picked up um, some Lilo Now stuff, which is made at Jolly Pumpkin, but they don't distribute out here. Mm -hmm. um, and just a, a bunch of other beer up there that, that was, you know, you can't get in D.C. So as long as it's all in the up and up, you can bring in pretty much whatever you want. So we do have a pretty eclectic bottle collection, um, which D.C. gets a lot of brands, but even outside of that, we're sneaking some other stuff in, which is cool. <laughs> which has made this week's CBC that much more intense. It's just like, <laughs> it's just like holy shit, I can't yeah. believe how, all these different beers that are around. So it's been fun. But. Yeah, well, welcome to D.C. <laughs> Thank you, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I'm sure if you're if you're out in D.C., you probably already know about this place and frequent it. But uh, yeah, if you're dropping through Meridian Pint. Right on. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. man. Cheers.